Hello again, this is Cassidy Frazee, and I am bringing you another of my video recaps of episodes from the first half of season six of The Walking Dead. And today, let me get my notes up here on the screen so I because I'm looking at my computer. Today, or actually right now, why I'm going to review now. Yes, now. We could do a whole who's on first gig right now. So what episode are you reviewing now? Yes, but what episode are you reviewing? I know you're doing now. Yes, I am. I'm doing now. When? Now. But what episode are you doing? Yes, everybody. But what episode are you doing? You know, uh, now. This was the fifth episode of season 6.1. Which means we're getting down to the, this episode is followed by three more episodes and then we're done. So we're going to catch up by tomorrow, which is Valentine's Day. I probably, what I'm going to do is review episodes six and seven uh, tomorrow and have them posted on the Snarking Dead. And then I will wait until Monday to give my thoughts on the very last episode so that I have a chance to see what happens in the first episode of the new part of season six because I think it'd just be kind of cool. So I'll get all these out, but they're coming and we're going to do this. But today, right now, is now. Yes, now. We're not going to, let's not play with that stupid joke anymore. Now. Um, and this takes up right after the part where Morgan hears Rick yelling. Of course, we don't see Morgan right away. The first person we see is, um, uh, is Deanna, who's up on the wall by the gate. And she is doing the tried and true, you know, she's looking out for stuff. But she, when you hear Rick yelling and she turns to look in Rick's direction, you see the tried and true move of every character who is scared shitless, which is to basically... Go like this, you know, the eyes pop out and her face freezes. And why is she doing that? Well, because Rick's running toward the gates of the Alexandria safe zone, but it's not quite alone. Now let's review. <laughs> uh, because this part, this episode, this part right here is like maybe like an hour or so after the current events that were taking place in the very first episode aired, you know, a month earlier. So in time, it's taken us five weeks to get to like an hour and a half or so down the road. I mean, really, uh, this is the most longest protracted day played out. But it does get played out. But anyway, so what is going wrong? Well, Rick's job was to go to the quarry and he was going to create the zombie fun run and lead all the walkers away from Alexandria. And of course we know that got bungled up and now there's a certain part of the, the herd that broke off toward Alexandria. Well, that part of the herd is right on Rick's ass the whole way up to the gate. He is running his butt off with all these zombies behind him. Hey, that would make a good story title. All you zombies, yeah. All these zombies are right behind him. So we could also make the joke, you had one job, Rick. <laughs> one job, and you didn't do it. Uh, so yeah, zombies all over the place. Uh, the shit is going down. And this goes back to something I said in a video recap I did a, a couple back, where I said, how did Rick get out of the RV? I mean, we saw him in the RV being surrounded by walkers. And now he's running his ass off with walkers on his butt. Um, I mean, I can think of a couple of ways he did it. But maybe one day we'll get an answer, but probably not. The, the, the walking dead people were probably like, we don't care. So Anyway, he gets inside. Um, you know, Morgan rushes up to the gate. Uh, Aaron rushes up to the gate to get him inside close it up and Alexandria is surrounded by walkers I mean they're they're like three deep at the walls from what we can see now on the set if you have ever looked at pictures on Google Maps 
of the area that they closed off for Alexandria Safe Zone, it goes all the walls go all the way around the the subdivision in Sonona, Georgia, and um, we can assume that they didn't put zombies around the entire wall, but it looks like that. They're 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 stacked up three deep trying to get in, and there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of commotion, and of course, you know, people are freaking. Uh, we don't like this, but. Uh, Rick finds out that Michonne and Scott and Keith got back, but they have no word on Glenn, and they are assuming that, you know, Abraham, Sasha, and Daryl are continuing onward to lead the rest of the walkers away. So Rick's brilliant plan at this point is, we'll wait these guys out, and then when the others get back, We'll just lead them away. We'll just get cars and shit and lead them away. So Rick's not too worried. You know. And it's in this time that um, we also find out from Aaron that he found one of the wolves, the dead wolves, that uh, Carol capped. She, he, they, had a, uh, they had his backpack. And they had the pictures he was taken. So he's kind of guilt-ridden that perhaps he did something to lead the wolves here so that they could come and break into Alexandria and so forth and so on and you know geez there's a whole lot of drama here um, but anyway let me just try this anyway um, naturally this is a situation that the Alexandrians are not used to they're all kind of like getting freaky so there's a run on a pantry people are just taking stuff uh, Spencer tries to put that down, and he is successful, but Deanna later finds out that he looted the goddamn pantry, and he's getting drunk in the afternoon, because it's like, hey, end of the world, baby, you know, who cares, let's just, let's just get our drink on, and everything is going to be fine. Um, Tara goes off to visit Denise, who is treating Scott, who is not doing well because all of a sudden he, he's got a bad infection so she's afraid he's going to die and Tara's like giving her the old pep talk and um, telling her you know you can do this you can figure it out you will and this brings up probably one of the more interesting moments in this episode only because you finally get to see the cheesy shit <laughs> that the Walking Dead producers are doing to try to hide the fact that um, the actress who plays Tara, the beautiful Alana Masterson, uh, yeah, Masterson, is pregnant, uh, which she was during the filming. She was, she was pregnant. And so they do a long shot of her, and she's in her hoodie and everything else and a jacket and, and uh, stuff. And it's designed to make it look like she has bulky clothes on, trying to hide the fact that underneath all that bulky clothes, you know, she's got a baby bump happening. The tie, the tried and true, you know, how do we keep a character who isn't supposed to be pregnant from looking pregnant when they are pregnant? Especially in Tara's case, because, you know, unless they really want to, lesbians are have a pretty surefire method of not getting pregnant. And let, like I said, unless they really, really want to, you know, absolutely. But uh, in Tara's case, no. If she got pregnant, somebody better figure out what's going on there because uh, we're talking immaculate conception. No shit. Uh, there are walkers inside. Uh, a couple of them were left over from the wolves attacks. A couple, you know, break in. Uh, they were left over from the attacks and at the same time Maggie decides well I'm going to head outside because I gotta go find Glenn you know, she needs to find Glenn Aaron discovers her on the way on the way of getting prepared to go out looking for Glenn you know she's in full Terminator mode and she's gonna go find her husband I'm getting back my man you know so Aaron decides I'm gonna help you out and I'll show you a way of getting out so here we go. Uh, at the same time, we're starting to see the fallout 
uh, with Jesse's household. Uh, Carl is thinking about heading out to look for Enid. Because you knew he would. Carl needs his pudding, and his pudding happens to be somewhere out there in Walkerland. Well, Ron's going to spoil that shit. And um, Ron, this I have to say, this was some really bad acting. <laughs> Carl is completely oblivious to the fact that just by going to Ron and asking him about this shit, um, you know, Ron's got this murder look <laughs> His eyes the whole time, and Carl's just like, "Hey, dude, I'm gonna go over the wall. And I'm gonna go look for you. Did you want to help?" Carl, you're just not picking up on the fact that you're pissing this dude off. You are pissing him off hard. Meanwhile, back in Jesse's house, you know, and this would be a great thing because if Jesse had only had a girl. But never mind that. Uh, bad puns all over the place. Sam is, of course, losing his shit. Sam is scared to death. This is way more than he can handle. And that's part of the problem is that this kid has been traumatized by the fact that he's been brought up in an abusive household. He had an abusive father. He watched his father abuse his mother. You know, mom used to... Tell him, go and lock yourself in the closet when you hear daddy beating on me. So now the stakes are going up. I mean, you know, somebody was just murdered in his kitchen by mom. Um, he's been threatened by that friendly, kindly woman down the street who makes the cookies that she's going to tie his ass to a tree outside and let the zombies feast on him if she, rat if he, if she gets ratted out by his ass. So... Sam is not holding on real well. He is starting to go PTSD big time. You know, it's all catching up with him. So while Ron is probably thinking murder time thoughts for Carl, Sam's just like shutting down. He is just, he's unable to cope. I mean, seriously, the kid is a basket case. And in normal instances, you know, you take your kid to the, the therapist and say, you know, my son has this deathly fear of undead coming and eating him. Is there anything we can do to help? But you can't do that here. Not in the Walking Dead universe. Um, I'm sure Carol would be able to help. Uh, you would hate, you know, it's really a good thing that you don't see Carol at any point during these shenanigans because if she had realized that Sam was flipping the fuck out, she likely would have just put a bullet in the back of his head, you know, just like, I'm sorry, Jesse, there's nothing we can do for your son, kaboom. <laughs> she probably wouldn't do it quite that way. She'd probably say, hey, Jess, can I take Sam and show him some flowers I planted <laughs> just around the house, you know, right behind the house? Can I? No, let me, let me show him these flowers I put out, yeah. So um, Jesse does get to find uh, the woman who was was married to the guy who didn't make it back uh, with the other Alexandrians, and she suicided, and now she's walkerfied inside of her house. <laughs> so Jesse ends up stabbing her and gives everybody this speech that this is what we have to deal with. We have to learn to deal with the situation. This is, here it comes, this is now. You know, that's the whole point of the episode title. This is now. This is the reality we have to deal with. And it isn't good because it's not something the Alexandrians have dealt with. And Rick, for the most part, maintains a very low profile simply because it probably wouldn't do real well for him to be wandering around telling everybody, you all suck, you're going to die. Um, he's doing his best. It's it's not it's not well. Um, Deanna finally has her Walker moment, where she's returning the food in the middle of the night that Spencer ripped off, and she's attacked by a Walker that was missed. Um, Jesse and Rick have a, a little canoodling session that goes on. Now, Deanna is telling Rick that they need him as the leader; that she's really not any good. 
anymore and you know she defiantly smacks on the gates to piss off the walkers on the other side and stuff like that that's all in the past and you also see uh, that's all near toward the end and you also see that the people are writing names on the walls of those who were killed in the wolves attack and those who didn't make it back from the, the zombie fun run that's all happening toward the end too well toward the end there you have uh, Maggie and Aaron removing uh, Glenn's name because you know we know Glenn's not dead or at least Maggie does but the most important thing, the most important thing that happens during this episode happens right near the end, second, third of the episode where Aaron's leading Maggie through the sewers that are underneath uh, Alexandria. And they look pretty funky. They're, they're pretty funky sewer, sewers. And they're going to try to get out that way. And finally, when it comes to shit or get off the pot about getting out of Alexandria, we have the big reveal, something that uh, Rachel and I had been corresponding back and forth with, and we're like, we know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen. It's the big reveal. Maggie is with child. Maggie is pregnant. She says so. She says, I'm pregnant. <laughs> two things to look for one this becomes a very important plot point with Maggie's development in her relationship with not only the Alexandrians but with Rick and uh, it it's going to cause some issues again unintended consequences the unintended consequences of course was uh, Maggie and Glenn were smushing their genitals together and they created another human being. Um, yeah, shit happens. <laughs> it's all those lonely nights up there in uh, the guard towers, you know, and stuff like that. Actually, it probably, it's hard to say because you don't know how far along uh, Maggie is. My guess is uh, they probably started, you know, banging a gong right about the time they got to Alexandria and it was like all safe. And they had a house with rooms and a door that you could lock. So, Maggie's pregnant. It's not a good thing. It's going to lead to issues with her and Rick later on down the road. But it's like the calm before the Maggie Green storm. And um, yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some terrible shit coming our way. Uh, that's why this section of the comic was known as um, was the you know the prelude to war. This was in the prelude to war area, coming up. Almost it's coming, but anyway, this is one of those character building episodes where again, not a whole lot's going on because the time frame. This is the fastest time frame we actually get in terms of this episode is that Rick comes back after like maybe 90 minutes or so and then we go through into the night and he's doing everything to keep your lights down or extinguished or keep your curtains drawn keep the noise keep the noise to a minimum don't make you know if we if we stay silent long enough the zombies will just all walk away they'll lose interest and they'll wander off that's what he's hoping on and he's also a little worried because they not only haven't heard anything from Abraham, Sasha, and Daryl, but they haven't returned. You know, they haven't returned either. So there's this concern of what's going on with them. And well, in the next episode, we find out what's going on with them in the episode "Always Accountable," and that's when we get to meet some new people. And they're fun people. They are a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's just say um, they are going to be with us for a while. It's not going to be. Um, it's not going to be something that we're going to enjoy. It's going to be painful. So, but this is what happens in now. It's it's a nice little character montage. 
of all the episodes, this one was probably one of the ones that fell the flattest um, because Rick does get back and all the excitement has died down and really in terms of character building it's not a huge character building episode but it is doing some foreshadowing I mean you're you're seeing what's happening with Sam you're seeing what's happening with Jesse you're seeing what's happening with Ron and of course the big announcement Maggie's pregnant yeah. so all this shit is coming together and now we're going to switch points of view and we're going to go back and we're going to see some other people that are still outside the wall. So we won't be back inside Alexandria for a bit now. Now. Really. <laughs> we're not going to be here now. Or we're, we're moving on. So there you go. Now for The Walking Dead episode uh, 6.1.5 and that is it and I am Cassidy and I'll be back I've got three more episodes to go and I'll try to get at least two of them out tomorrow so when I see you next time happy Valentine's Day I hope your zombie bites are are beautiful ones I hope you I hope you enjoy them bye <laughs>